welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now, the big event to watch over the next six to eight months is the general elections 2024 that will be held in April next year. Historically, the run-up to general elections has been a good period for infrastructure and capex-related companies since a lot of government spending generally happens in the run-up to the elections. Today on Smart Money, we're going to discuss just that. We have Gurmi Chadda of Complete Circle Consultants right here with us in the studio. And the question we're asking is, are we witnessing a repeat of the 2003 to 2007 investment cycle? And if yes, what are the stocks or sectors that you need to play this theme? Gurmi, thank you so much for being here with us in the studio. Uh, thanks, thanks, Sonia. And uh, you know, so the reason we chose to discuss this was so one was the data which was coming, and second was the on-ground feeler you get when you travel. So I've been traveling to places like Ludhiana, Nasik, Nagpur, uh, Faridabad, NCR places, and you know, there's some lot of work coming to MSMEs, right, from the larger uh, OEMs, and then we try to you know collate it with data. So if you see, for example. Uh, the gross capital fixed formation is almost 30% of GDP. Now, for to make it simple, this is basically the new and existing assets you add minus the, uh, the, what you dispose, both at government, company, and household level, which tells you that you know business activity is picking up. Uh, then we figured out we, we tried comparing it with 2003-7 to now. So the co corporate profitability in 2003 to 7 went up from two and a half percent to five percent of GDP, right? Uh, the capacity utilization went up to almost 80%. Uh, the new projects awarded by banks all went up. So if you see now, from FY20, we were 2.2% uh, of profitability to GDP. We've gone up to 4, so we are probably at the midpoint. The capacity utilization now is almost 75%. Okay. Right? So there, I'm just saying these are early signs. I don't want to write, jump the gun and say that we are exactly in that cycle. And probably this will be more long drawn. Uh, because uh, the world is not what it was in 2003-07. But all the trends, you see the, the figures coming from private players like LNT, etc., tells you that this, you know, the investment cycle is fixed started. Started by the government, mm. and now I think the, the private sector is, is, is... Is getting into it. Okay, so you know, let's talk about the different themes, right? And I'll just request my director to get uh, the themes up on board, because we're going to discuss some specific themes in this investment cycle. And here we have it. These are the big themes that we're looking at, right? This capital goods, this power, cement, utilities, infra, PSU banks, as well as the home improvement theme. Uh, so, so let's uh, go one by one, step by step. The first theme is capital goods, and we discussed this ad nauseum that you know capital goods as a sector has not performed for over a decade. What makes this time different? So uh, three three things, right? Uh, if you see, for example, uh, uh, the commentary from let's say LNT, which is the largest player, right? It's up the tender pipeline to 10 lakh crores. It started the year with 9.7. It's already uh, uh, guiding for exceeding last year's guidance in terms of 4 lakh crore is the current order book. Now they're getting orders from hydrocarbons. So if you see uh, Saudis, uh, they have a clear plan of 2030. So whenever oil goes up, they want to use that to get to non-renewables, right? So huge orders coming. We saw $3.8 billion from the Jafra field of Aramco coming to LNT. Uh, then, you know, the other, uh, the private orders are 20% of the book. So just about 10, 12 percent. Uh, so it's not just confined to, you know, and all segments, infra, power, hydrocarbons are firing for it. Uh, I also believe there will be better ROE accretion from 12 percent to, you know, it will start reflecting over a course of time. But it's already performed a lot this year, right? And LNT outperformed everybody else in 2003 to 7, mm -hmm. right? So when the cycle starts, see, you have to play the secularity of the opportunity, right? So if the opportunity is good, you have to then see that how the industry's profit pool will go up, the order pool will go up. So you, you start. You can start with, let's say, LNT, but you have to really go down the value chain and, and play the sector well. Okay, so LNT is one of your first, uh, you know, themes that you're looking at. First stocks within this capital goods theme. Any other stocks that you like within this space? Yeah. So you know, uh, quite a lot uh, uh, we like in this space. One of them, I think, is the railway has been a huge capex driver. So in last four years, the, the railway capex has doubled. The spending by the government has doubled. Uh, and while there are different places, there are railway financers, there are different, we like one company more from the, again, as I said, the size of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we like Titagar, uh, you know, so A, they are, they are the leader in wagons. So now they are expanding capacity from 8,500 wagons to 12,000 wagons. Uh, they are also beneficiary of Metro and Vande Bharat. Mm -hmm. So they are, ex they are expanding the coach capacity from 250 to almost 800. And they are getting, you know, a lot of international orders. And they've also got into forging wheels, mm. right? Uh, from uh, so, and there they have a tie-up with RK Forgings. 
So their order book right now is 10 times sales. So FY23 order book is basically 10 times sales. Uh, valuations are rich, but then that gives you a, basically a visibility of how it's going to, you know, uh, play out over a period of time. So that's the second one uh, we like in uh, capital goods space. Okay, so there's LNT, there's Sitagar. Uh, you know, these are companies that I think are well discovered this year as well. So you're saying that this is a structural upcycle. Even if these stocks have rallied 30-40%, it's not too late to enter them even now, right? See, also, uh, market has a bad experience. See, EPC, capital goods is a very selected play. Mm. The balance sheet has to be strong. Your working capital has to be good. Execution has to be only. You can't just rely only on the order book. Mm. Those stories have played out very badly in last 10, 12 years. So, once you become the preferred, you can call it L1 in case of LNT, and you can call it other uh, terminology, then you have to go with the ones who have a solid track record. And there's ABB India on that list. Absolutely. Well. That Absolutely. wraps up the discussion on capital goods. Quickly on ABB India, if you want to take us through what the big trigger is. Again, as I said, uh, you know, if you hear the management, they're talking of, you know, 15% plus kind of uh, revenue guidance, very good expansion plans as well, solid balance sheet strength, uh, good pedigree, you know, in the, as I said, I, I, so there are a lot of road developers, you remember, so they have shot up uh, and there was sudden expansion in road and the markets had a bad experience as well. Mm. So ABB again is again industrial recovery as well as overall, uh, you know, investment cycle recovery for us. Okay. And good parentage as well. Yeah. Okay, oh, uh, absolutely, good parentage. That's the capital good space. Let's move on to theme number two, which is the energy sector. And I want to understand a little more about this because renewable energy power has come back in a big way. Okay. So for people who've missed out on this theme, how do they optimize here? So, you know, clear trend. So, power, I think, is a proxy to your manufacturing picking up, consumption picking up. So, if you see August numbers, we were 264 gigawatts, which is like 16% more than last year, August. Mm -hmm. If you see September first fortnight, we are 23% up on, on power. So, clearly, and if you see David Solomon's uh, speech the day before, he suddenly switched gears and talking of, you know, even traditional sources of energy, secure energy. So, all that ESG thing, uh, which plagued the sector, which made a lot of these companies, you know, out of favor because of, you know, traditional fossil fuel sources are suddenly coming back. So, the world is now realizing because of geopolitical tension that uh, the path to renewable is also long drawn, right? So, I think that ESG thing is probably making way for more traditional guys. And, you know, as I said, this part has been completely ignored in portfolios. So, I'm not saying you should have all this portfolio. I'm saying, but because this portfolio part is so missing in portfolios, it makes sense to add. So, we like Tata Power. Uh, integrated play from generation to transmission and all. So they have a clear goal of doubling revenues to 60,000 crores by FY25. Okay. Uh, 20 gigawatt goal on uh, renewable energy by 2027. Uh, solar EPC very large player. They have like 12,000 crore revenue uh, guidance there. Uh, EV charging. So they're playing the complete uh, and at some point of time I think there'll be some value unlocking with renewable energy probably uh, getting hived off at some point of time, the way, you know, they are taking it up. And I what mean, about the valuation for something like a Tata Power? I asked because it has been once again, you know, a big gainer this it's year. It's not really gained much, actually. So, if you see, the, the last high was 320. Mm. So it went down to like 180. It's currently midway around 250 or oh, 30 times. So it's not like really cheap because some of some of the run-up has happened. But as I said, the, I see the size of the opportunity, you know, really Large. justifying that, that kind of... The run-up, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, that's Tata Power. In this energy theme, uh, any other stocks that attract you? So, we, we, we like JSW Energy now. So, almost 85% of the portfolio is now on the long-term uh, PPS. Uh, they've got the balance sheet better now. So, debt equity ratio is down to 1.5. Uh, they again have a goal by 2030 of 20 gigawatts in terms of their expansion capacity. Uh, and they are making uh, moves in renewable as well. So, that's the second one we like. Uh, you know, in, in this particular space. Okay, so uh, the other theme that we're looking at is the cement industry, right? Yeah. Uh, and generally you notice that when infrastructure picks up, or when real estate picks up, cement obviously is an ancillary that picks up too. Uh, and now we're hearing that even pricing is going up, yes. especially in regions like the south. Yeah. So which are the biggest beneficiaries of this? So I think you, you have to uh, play through both a large player as well, a, let's say uh, uh, a turnaround story in case there is one. Uh, so, Ultratech, I think, is clear beneficiary. They are, they are 132 million tons on capacity. They are coming up with another 22 uh, in central India, uh, which again is, will be a beneficiary of pricing being better. Uh, the debt has come down from 22,000 crores to 3,000 crores, so hardly any debt now. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, so it will give you a perfect operating leverage and, and financial leverage. They spoke of 90% capacity utilization in a few months. In fact, it touched 100% in one month. So, perfect operating financial leverage, large player. And 80% of the incremental capacity is now coming from top three players. So, mm -hmm. the industry will also 
consolidate. So we like uh, uh, Ultratech. And the one we like more is now, is one of the turnaround stories. It's a risky bet, small cap company, it's called Sagar Siemens. Uh, it's, uh, so one is valuation, it's available at $50 a ton. Uh, that's below replacement cost, right? So if you, you Ambuja just acquired Sanghi at $100 a ton. Mm. So this one is $50. Uh, one of the lowest cost producers of cement, almost 12-15% lower than the peers in South. Uh, and I think should probably become cash positive next two years. And after Andhra's acquisition, they have like 11 million tons. Mm. Uh, right mix of OPC, PPC, uh, almost 50-50%. So that's the other one we like. Uh, okay, so there's Altratech Cement and there's Sagar Cement. So, so let's try and just rewind all the stocks that we've uh, talked about so far in case you've missed out on any of them. There's l &T, there is uh, Tata Power, there's... Uh, Ultratech Cement, Sagar Cement and Titagar Wagons as well along with ABB India. So these are of course in the capital goods theme, that's uh, the focus area, L&T, Titagar and ABB. In the energy theme, there's Startup Power and JSW Energy. In the cement theme, there's Sagar Cement as well as Ultratech Cement that uh, Gurmeet likes. So these are a list of stocks. Of course, these are not stock recommendations. Uh, these are purely for uh, you know learning purposes. You need to take your own call on whether you want to invest or not. But this, of course, will help you to understand what the prognosis is as far as growth for these companies is concerned. Let's do one thing. Let's take a short commercial break. Many more themes and stocks lined up in just a bit. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still watching Smart Money on CNBC TV. We're in conversation with Gurmeet Chadda, the managing partner and CIO at Complete Circle uh, Consultants. And of course, you know, we're talking about the big theme, which is the pickup in the investment cycle. Is this that same period in 2003 to 2007 where we saw a big boom in the investment cycle? Could be the case. Uh, Gurmeet, uh, you know, uh, we are talking about different themes and one of the spaces you like is the utility and the infrastructure space. Take us through the potential then. Which are the stocks that you prefer? So, infra has two elements, the physical and the digital. Uh, we like digital infra also equally good. So, one play has been Tejas and it came in our, into our radar when Tata Group acquired a majority stake in FI21. Uh, it's been a great story uh, since then. Uh, this year, their order book is 2000 crores. So, it's basically a telecom OEM, which very designs, manufactures, you know, telecom equipments mm -hmm. and networking solutions and products. Uh, so, great uh, beneficiary of telecom capex, uh, data consumption, broadband network extang uh, you know, expansion, 5G rollouts. So, very, very secular story there and uh, it's turned a bit of positive uh, FI23 and uh, has almost two times order book already for current sales. And we think that, that this, you know, India's differentiation this decade is the digital stack we have. And this, this one fits the bill uh, perfectly. Okay, so that's on Tejas Networks. Power Grid, I think, has been one of your old favorites, yeah, right? Yeah. But it hasn't really performed uh, in the last couple of years. Why is that? And why do you think this time there could be a turnaround? So I think this move to renewable. Uh, so government goal is to get to 500 gigawatts uh, by 2030. Now, assuming they even get to 400, 450, uh, there will be a huge capex spending on transmission because, you know, the, the grids and everything needs a lot of redo. Uh, the opportunity is almost 30 billion dollars over the, so it's almost averaging 50, 60,000 crores spent per year. Uh, recently, of the tender uh, they got, uh, their share was almost 50%. Mm -hmm. So they will get a lion's share in this place, a 6% dividend yield, 10, 11 times earnings. So valuations are pretty uh, reasonable. Uh, and the overall opportunity size is, is pretty huge and very good order book as well. Uh, so that's, again, it's actually linked to power. Again, transition to REC and, and traditional gas switching in. So, so we like uh, Power Grid as well. Okay, okay. Like Power Grid and you like Tejas Networks. Got that. Let's move on now and talk about the home improvement space because, uh, you know, that's one sector you've, uh, you've betted on for a very long time. I remember uh, Polycab was one of your top picks and that had a huge rally. You like Kajaria Ceramics and you continue to stay with that. But my question here is what are the valuations looking like sure. now? And sure. is it towards a mature end of the upcycle? Uh, so what happens is, uh, as I said, uh, so is that uh, once the uh, entire size of the opportunity is big, the profit pool can can really expand. You know, the entire sector can see. So, so home improvement for us is a big theme. So there are pipe makers, there is cables and wires makers, and and some pockets it has become expensive, like cables and wires as well as you know the pipe guys, right? Uh, what especially with tiles and sanitary wear, the unorganized market is is still quite large. Right, so Polycap is not 22% market share. It wasn't that three years back. 
right so kajaria for example uh, again household name very very strong brand recall great dealership expansion uh, happening there is a export opportunity now so august exports are up almost 40% almost 2100 crores for ceramic and vitrified tiles then there is duty on china anti dumping duty on china by a lot of countries mm. right third uh, india you made gas based plants compulsory gas prices are so multiple uh, tailwinds uh, you know is, is supporting that sector and and they are guiding for 15% volume growth this year as well wow. uh, which is which is pretty nice and that that nice capex man good balance sheet very clean balance sheet so that's the reason we like uh, kajaria okay and uh, what about some of your earlier favorites like polycab etc is it is it still okay to get in or? still good polycab is still good it's still 40 times it's not it's not what it was in ipo <laughs> 15 times right but see uh, the stock grows with earnings and and pe rating right i think the earning growth is still there okay right so it may not compound at at let's say 30 40% right can't it's not reasonable also to expect stocks to do that but i think there is still if you have reasonable expectation i think it's it's still decent okay it's, uh, don't i don't keep your expectations very high right manage them after the run up you've seen in polycap the other one is terra sanitary where you like that as well Absolutely. uh is it you know i mean there's a big real estate boom that we're seeing currently is that the primary reason and what are the big triggers both so there is new housing and there is uh need for see covid made people spend more on their houses yes because you spend more time at home so you want to redo your kitchen you want to redo your washrooms and all and you you don't mind spending 5 and lakhs today on you know redoing a kitchen or a washroom right people uh, rediscovered their homes in covid <laughs> yeah. no yeah and so there is demand on improvement as well as new housing uh, and they are expanding capacity again and you know in sarah's case the dealership network is now four times of what it was five years mm-hmm. So they're really going. So, so I like somebody who goes B two C after B two B with strong brand recall. You know, for me that is a long cycle. Uh, it's happened with Havel. It's happened with Polycap. I think it's going to happen with both of these, Kajaria and, and Sera. Okay. Now they have a brownfield capacity coming up for faucet wear, other than the sanitary wear, which I think will add to the. So Sera is present both in B two B and B two C. Now we're expanding. You know, and forty five percent sales from tier three and below city. So very strong brand recall even in uh, up country. Okay. so that makes the brand you know uh, the brand recall is 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 extremely high okay. uh, so that makes us you know a little constructive uh, on fair as energy guy okay we'll let's just try and revisit all of these themes right and just to understand from you what the potential is in the run up to the general elections because history has taught us that markets tend to always do very well e- either in the run up or post the general election i think it has to do with of course government spending boosting infrastructure boosting job creation etc uh what is your thought on how all of this could come together as we head into april 2024 i think there is that that risk will always remain on general election right and and so far i think the market is pricing in that uh, we would continue to have a a stable government even 2003 to 7 cycle sonia had 3 10% corrections and 130% correction in 2006 i remember june 12th there was a lower circuit of 1100 points on sunsex so markets will have corrections in between and that could be because of election could be for reasons like oil shooting up to 100 dollars or the 10 year us going up to let's say 5% right so intermittent corrections will come uh, and i think the market will want to see that but i think the rural economy will also stage a bit of a comeback with election spending mm. and a lot of infra work happening and that's the reason and as as i keep saying this is not should be not be your only portfolio it's just that this side of the portfolio is got completely ignored So it's good time to rebalance and and be a little more, you know. I, I in fact I would say more diversification is very important right yeah. now. Manage risk better, less markets will. Uh, so you know, uh, in the next nine, eight nine months there's a general election, but in the next one month there's also big event right, the cricket world cup, yeah. which is coming in, and that's a big focus area because you know we were talking about how hotel rates have just hit the roof right. Absolutely. Uh, even these platform aggregators, I mean something like a Zomato, there's generally more ordering activity picking up during the yeah. sports uh, sporting events. So what would your top two or three stock ideas be in the? So run-up? we were lucky in terms of getting into lemon tree very early, oh. uh, right when it was two digit, much much below seventy bucks. Uh, they were they've added one capacity in Mumbai near the airport, yeah. uh, and you know the model has changed. It's not developing. It's also co- co-owning and management contracts. You acquire a property, and that's a very asset-like model. Mm. So Indian Hotels is doing it, Lemon Tree is doing it. I think even ITC is now following suit. So once your capital efficiency comes in, you know, then the the business which is very cyclical can become a little more. So it's still a cyclical, okay. but it will become a little more. The cycles can be a little longer. Occupancies are up, ARRs are up. So we like QSR. I mean, I I personally think that this is one space. Uh, you know, the combined market cap of QSR is seventy thousand crores. Oh, wow. Less than Cipla. 
so the way we are consuming pizzas and etc oh, yeah okay. so i think i'm i'm bullish on ksr i also think some of these new age companies will do well you know i don't know which maybe it's too early to call uh, but and we are watching zomato we haven't really taken a call on it it's a 100 rupees right now yeah, so yeah yeah so we are watching sharing at 200 300 as well over the next couple of years i don't know i i just hope this ondc doesn't damage their take rates if that doesn't happen you know good thing is this duopoly now so people have tried amazon has tried in bangalore uber eats and you know the food pandas are out this is more a duopoly play and you're getting used to ordering food online so absolutely yeah. it's an addiction more than yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. all right gunit uh, really uh, you know great speaking to you and uh, hope you visit mumbai more often and come on our show thanks a lot thanks. for joining in always a pleasure thanks all right with that it's a wrap on smart money have a great weekend